I wake up in the morning and uh, I go to work and my work is Laibach and I am the engineer of the human souls. To do so, to be engineer of human souls, you have to somehow hyper-identify with your own role. You become the idea. You are not detached from the idea. You actually become the idea itself. It's not that we consider ourselves artists. We consider ourselves much more as uh, unartists. The simple fact is that uh, when Laibach started back in 1980, we understood ourselves as a, uh, not only as a producers of art, again, I don't like to use this word, uh, but I would say producers of statement, but uh, also as a kind of uh, social sculpture on itself, in itself, as a kind of machine that is a social sculpture. That's how we saw Laibach. And that's how Laibach, it is nowadays still. It's a collective uh, machine, anonymous machine. This is exactly what we wanted to do. Everybody can be basically Laibach. Nowadays, there are so many people involved and everybody is producing in this machinery that, uh, that, uh, that Laibach has become a notion and as a notion, kind of a metaphysical notion, or maybe in, a, in the Malevich sense, suprematistic notion, is completely anonymous and uh, completely uh, collectivist, basically. I am here, but I'm not here. I represent something which is much bigger than I am. Our basic idea was that we are uh, not doing only one thing, but we are doing many things. And each of these uh, things is basically a statement of its own. We considered, we started in the galleries. We started in the galleries and with uh, actually installations and uh, paintings. And we added uh, uh, the shows in galleries, the experimental shows, and we added poetry, we added uh, statements, texts, manifests. Then we realized that uh, whatever we do in terms of uh, our official action, uh, whatever we do is a statement, including what do we dress, what do we, how do we behave, and so on, yes? We always saw music and even entertaining music you know rock music pop music whatever you call it we saw it as a as something who is actually uh, coming out from uh, from the militant music and military music not only militant but military music you know in the old times all big armies they they had uh, all very well organized armies they had additional uh, musicians uh, who were, you know, you know, going together with the armies in, in the attack. They produced noise, additional noise, so that armies were, uh, were uh, louder and scarier. You know, there's this tradition of, of uh, military songs to upgrade the moral of soldiers and so on, etc. So there's the whole music idea of uh, rock bands and pop bands and jazz combos and so on is actually coming at least to a certain extent from military music. And that's also why Laibach was uh, wearing uh, military uniforms uh, at the very beginning when we started. And that's how we see, we saw ourselves as a, you know, somehow soldiers, uh, a militant combo. 
of course, everything what we did was quite problematic already for, even the name itself was problematic, the name that we were using. Um, so the government at that time and also the certain structures were very, you know, um, very nervous uh, uh, in relation to Laibach. So they were thinking what they should do to stop us. And they said, let's expose them. You know, on the main TV program, there were, there were only two TV programs in, at, at that time. Let's expose them at the main TV program, at the main slot, and they will you know, destroy themselves because being so radical. And that's what they did. Uh, so the whole country was watching that. And we were super serious. And we even said to the director, you know, I should put your uh, lights from, from below so that uh, we're going to look even much more scary. And he said, yeah, uh, perfect, yes, let's, let's do it like that. It was five of us sitting in front of the camera and we did this uh, interview, which was, uh, of course, extremely, extremely unusual uh, for that time. After everything was finished already, the presenter edited this call to the public. He said that uh, now after they have seen this interview on TV, that he hopes that uh, people are going to um, stand against these ideas, you know, here in the middle of Slovenia and in the middle of Ljubljana, and that they will uh, React, which was basically a direct call to lynch, so to say. So yeah, it was quite, to a certain extent, dangerous, and we had to hide for uh, you know for two weeks. But uh, we were lucky that uh, people were more scared uh, scared than we were, you know. So nothing happened eventually in the end, and there was a big uh, uh, only there was a quite quite a big reaction of the so-called civil movements and philosophers like, for instance, Slavoj Žižek and some others. They stood up and started to analyze what has happened, and uh, they, st they stood up in pro in protection uh, of Laibach. And uh, and uh, but yeah, we were banned officially since then, since 1983 till 1987, which was you know a good thing. You know, it's like Scarlet Pimpernel, if you remember the character. You seek him here, you seek him there, you seek him everywhere. You know, but he's nowhere, so to say. That's, that's how Laiba behaved when we were banned. We were there, we were nowhere, we were in underground and so on. And we did uh, shows. And in many ways, they were the purest, uh, the purest form of Laiba. We didn't even use the name Laiba, we just put our symbol, the black cross. And everybody knew, aha, uh -huh, Laibach is doing something, you know. So this is where the power of the symbol came to, to function. The symbol itself was strong enough and everybody understood, aha, uh -huh, this is Laibach, let's, let's go and see the show. We avoid stepping into concrete politics and we also avoid doing uh, concrete political statements in terms of, ah, uh, you know, uh, we don't put ourselves on, on the sides, normally. We don't say we uh, for this guy against the other guy and so on, yeah. And here, in terms of uh, Julian Assange, we actually did step over the line uh, somehow because we did dedicate it, this song to a certain extent to Julian Assange and to all the whistleblowers. And uh, Julian Assange, for instance, uh, he is, uh, of course, the, 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 the figure that you know, represents uh, the modern whistleblower nowadays. And uh, I think that uh, he does not differ so much from the figure that, uh, for instance, Christ represented in the, in the time of the begin beginning of the Christianity, yes. So Julian Assange is a kind of modern version of Christ, the digital version of Christ. Many journalists risk their lives uncovering uh, something that uh, is creating the a system of power that uh, politics is based on. This responsibility 
everybody should have, including the artists, including the politicians, of course, everybody, you know. Guitar can still be, of course, an, uh, uh, a machine gun. You know, we live in a very noisy times. <laughs> and, and the lava is not exactly the, you know, project for uh, conf comforting people, uh, except if they, if they can comfort themselves within the truth itself, yes?